Well, we're finally here, leaving Uxbridge, leaving the metropolis behind. We've spent the weekend here visiting family and uh, family visiting us. And it's been great. But now, heading north up the Grand Union, 84 miles to Braunston, and uh, who knows from there, we don't know which direction we're going to go. So, here we go. Come along with us. This is Denham Deep Lock. We're about a mile or so north of Uxbridge. And uh, the cruising gods are looking down on us again. We've got a lovely day. Last few days while we've been stuck in Uxbridge, it's been grisly and gray and dreary. And also look, you can see the bottom of the canal. And there is a definite absence of rubbish. No beer cans, no plastic bags. My faith in human nature has been restored. A bit deeper than we used to lately. Right, I'm Eleven out. feet. I'm used to it now. It's okay. Uh, the sun's gone in and we're back to grey skies again. But all along the stretch of this canal for a, a mile or two, well two miles probably, are these lakes. Uh, I guess they're uh, old gravel pits filled in. But the water here is crystal clear and I think that's because there's a river popping in and out of the canal, uh, keeping it quite clean. So, really enjoying this, loving it to bits. This is everything I just want to be. Everywhere I want to be, rather. Not in cities. We've been cruising for about an hour and the bread's been sitting on top of the stove. So I went down to knock it back down. You just bash the dough so that collapses back down, gave it a little bit of a knead. I've popped it in a bread tin and left it to rise again. But I've realized a great advantage of making bread during the day. The dough was warm. My hands were so cold. <laughs> and kneading the dough, I've got really lovely warm hands here. But if you do suffer from warm hands, which bought me one of these the other day, it's got a little plastic chip in it which if I can find it and break it you'll see that change colour gradually and this goes hard and hot and I do really suffer with cold hands I lose my circulation completely um, but we've got two of these so that's really hot now so I can just hold that when they're finished, you pop them back in boiling water again and they're ready to go for another day. Just snap them and keep warm. The other thing to keep your hands warm, a cup of coffee and a wagon wheel, you can't beat it. Oh no. Oh, I nearly had the chimney off then with that branch. Mind your head. Duck. <laughs> Mind the coffee. OMG. Oh, no. <laughs> 
that's what you get for, for filming and not paying attention. Anyway, I on the other hand, Jeez. being hot stuff, don't need artificial hand warmers. Do you not need your wagon wheel? I do need then? my wagon wheel, yeah. Thank you. Just about half a mile north of this railway bridge is the proposed bridge to cut across Denham Vale for the HS2 high speed uh, rail link from London to up north. <coughs> Which, if uh, you're of the same opinion as me, is a complete waste of money. But who am I to stop progress? Is it progress, sir? Had spoken. <laughs> Don't get me started. Today we were out walking at seven, weren't we? With the dogs, because we uh, needed to go to the co-op because we ran out of coffee. Oh, mornings without coffee is not You good, cannot is it? start the day without <laughs> coffee, it's just wrong. So it was almost dark when we went out, wasn't it? Yeah. Walked off so three miles. Three mile round trip to get some coffee and dog dinner. And as you can see, it's a blooming cold day today. There's uh, mist on the water still. But uh, we're not going far, we're just going to do about three miles, head towards Rickmansworth and uh, moor up again. And uh, clean the, we haven't lit the fire this morning because we want to clean the flue and the chimney out today. So it needs to be cold while we scrape the back of the wood burner as well. So yeah, all in all it's been a bit of a fresh start today. So cool. Funnily enough, it was the first night that the fire stayed in all night, wasn't it? We were trying to let it go out, yeah. but it stayed it's alive all night. All night. But the boat was lovely and cosy still this morning. Um, yeah. So, see you later. Bye. A bit of water coming over these gates.
nice old lock cottage. Not sure if it's still habited, but look at that behind. A development of some sort on the outskirts of Watford. Lovely old railway bridge. But at the back here, there's a small holding. The interesting thing is, they've got what I think is capybara. Sky's looking a bit ominous over there, Fran. Whoa, nice windy day. Well, we're uh, at the water point filling up and boy does it ever take an age. Bought this little uh, small 30 foot hose. Trouble is it's got a narrow bore on it and uh, filling up the tank can take an hour, at least an hour with this hose. <laughs> so <laughs> we've been here, we've had lunch, soup and a roll. I've been for a walk with the dogs and we're still not full, so I'm uh, going to call it quits and uh, fill up again tomorrow. Here we are coming up Batchworth Lock, just outside Rickmansworth and just next door to it is another lock that takes you up the river Chess which is navigable for a short distance to a basin I think yeah, nice, uh, nice setting
Oh, Fran's just reminded me that it's only three weeks to go for the shortest day of the year, the winter solstice, which is uh, a day Fran celebrates more than Christmas, her being a bit of a hippie. Don't you? Why do you then? Because, can you hear me? Yeah, I think so. It's just, uh, it's a natural turning point, isn't it? If you're in tune with nature and in tune with what's around you, it's that darkest point. Once you get past that, the darkest day, everything's looking brighter. The bees turn around at that point of the year. A lot of the, the plants change and begin to develop buds. And it's the same growth, really. Well, I know I feel a lot better when uh, the day starts stretching out again. Still, you can't uh, disagree that this is still beautiful. Well that was a close shave, I've just pulled in to the lock where Fran's helping a fellow boater come through as we're waiting to go up, heard this almighty crack and this tree right behind me fell down. Jeez. I was no more than six feet away, the back end of the boat, was no more, it's moved forward now, it's under its own. Oh my god, I'm so lucky. That, that would have could have killed, killed me, Jan. Could it? Look at the size of it. It's broken all the railings, look. Just look what it's done to that railing. Jesus, hun. Just was not my time. Second, uh, you know, uh, well, I don't know. Unbelievable. Look at the size of the railings, look. Well that was a close one, that's the closest I've ever come to being sent up there. I just six foot behind that tree and uh, well in front of it rather, uh, it's such a heavy tree as you can see the damage it did to the bridge railing and uh, I just shake it like a leaf, I found it into Canal and River Trust and uh, I'll come and sort it out obviously, but uh, had I have been five seconds later, I just don't bear to think about it. Absolutely unbelievable. My boating days could have been over, folks. <laughs> well, despite nearly being flattened by a tree and being on the edge of Watford, it's one of the most picturesque stretches of canal. I think we've ever been on. It's absolutely stunning this last couple of miles that we've done. It's beautiful. What you got, Fran? Well, I don't know yet. Yeah. Oh, that's that's not. That's we've been looking for something to put in the engine room to keep our boring pins and chains in. Oh, we'll love that. <laughs> Well, as the sun's getting ready to set on a gorgeous afternoon, I'm going to go inside and contemplate the meaning of life with a strong cup of tea in the absence of uh, alcohol on board. That's going to have to do.